Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Georgie, owner of Gigi Brows UK, and today's video is on salt and saline tattoo removal. So, what is salt and saline tattoo removal? It's a very safe and simple procedure. It's similar to the original technique that we use to actually implant the pigment. Whereas this time we are implanting a solution that's mainly made up of salt. When we implant salt into the skin where the pigment is present, we are allowing the osmotic process to take place. This process is going to attract unwanted ink particles and therefore we are going to extract that from out of the skin. The skin will then scab and the scabs are going to pull and remove unwanted pigment over time during the healing process. We wouldn't really advise you to carry this out on a body tattoo because these tattoos are very deep within the skin. We could possibly cause more harm than good, whereas semi-permanent makeup in theory should be fairly superficial and therefore quite easy to remove from the area that we are treating. There's many advantages to salt and saline tattoo removal, including the fact that it's suitable for all skin types, there's minimal risk of scarring, it's not going to affect hair growth, and also it can extract all colors of the rainbow, it's not color sensitive. Clients are going to experience a little bit of downtime where the brows look a little bit sore and scabby, and they should also expect to have to return every six to eight weeks for another procedure um, for around six sessions we say on average. We want to manage these clients' expectations. It may take less, it may take more, but averagely six sessions. It's not a pain-free procedure for those of you who are thinking, oh, like, is this a little bit uncomfortable? It's not pain-free and it's, it's not completely uncomfortable, but you are implanting a sodium, so salt solution into the skin and that's going to hurt. It's an open wound. So they do need to experience some discomfort, but it's definitely not unbearable by any means. It's really important to work with a good solution, a reputable brand. I would personally recommend Fixed. It's been manufactured in the UK, it's vegan, it's safe, a very high success rate of extraction of the original pigment. It's also quite soothing on the skin as well because it contains aloe. I really like it, many artists across the UK really like it. If you're interested, I will link it below. But yeah, it's really important that you're using a really good solution because it is invasive and we want our clients to get the best results possible. Just quickly before we get started, I just really want to touch base on the differences between laser and salt and saline tattoo removal. Obviously, a lot of you will be familiar with the laser tattoo removal process. However, um, I think although there are many pros to laser, there are also cons when it comes to treating specifically the semi-permanent makeup. Um, first of all, salt and saline, as we went through earlier, it's safe, it's simple, um, it doesn't affect the hair growth, it isn't colour detective, etc. Whereas the laser, like, it, it is really invasive. It's more designed for body ink removal um, because that's a lot deeper, so therefore it has to be more invasive. Also, there is a risk of losing the hair as well, so we want to be really aware of that, especially when we are treating the eyebrows because our clients are going to be unhappy if they, if they their hair growth is reduced. Um, so although laser is really successful as well, when it comes to semi-permanent makeup, I do believe that the salt and saline process is a much better option. In terms of legalities, there aren't many. Um, you do need to have a prerequisite qualification in microimplantation, of course, um, but in terms of the training that you do, you just need to call your insurance provider and ask them what training they'll cover you for. Will they train you for an online course? Will you need to go and do face-to-face? -face? It is really dependent on your individual circumstances and your individual case. Um, but it's really important that you are confirming that with your provider before you invest in anything because you want to make sure that you're going on the correct course. 
In terms of anatomy and physiology, obviously you will all have a very good understanding of your AMP of the skin. What I really want you to understand is where in the skin is this pigment lying that you are wanting to extract. Now, if this pigment that you are tackling is looking blue, uh, green, grey, um, quite dark in colour, maybe it's even a little bit blurry, um, it's deep in the skin. It could be deep into the dermis and the subcutaneous layer. If pigment is implanted into this layer, we tend to see a blowout or pigment migration. There's lots of watery fatty cells in these layers and therefore the pigment simply can't sit still. Um, there's a lot of trauma to the area, potentially scarring, but it's deep. So it's going to be hard to extract. So you're going to want to manage these clients' expectations. Look, you might need to come in for eight to 10 sessions, I don't know, but it's not going to be a quick fix at all. If you are looking at pinky salmon um, pigment, it's usually because of poor quality pigment or poor pigment choice. Uh, from the original practitioner, but this tends to indicate that it's quite superficial and therefore quite simple to extract. They might be complete within maybe just a few sessions, um, but again, don't over promise and deliver to your clients. Do manage their expectations, but this is probably sitting quite superficial in the top layers of the dermis and the epidermis, so it shouldn't be too complicated and invasive to remove. In terms of preparing your client for their appointment, I would just ask them to avoid uh, things like their peels, glycolics, AHAs, retinols, etc. for a couple of weeks leading up to the appointment. Also avoiding sun exposure and the blood thinners, so warfarin, aspirin, ibuprofen, etc. But it's not, we're not looking for like flawlessly healed results like we would with SPMU, um, but that doesn't mean that we don't want to prepare our clients. So I would just send that over in an email to them um, upon booking. Okay, so coming on to the procedure itself, when it comes to choosing what machine speed you're going to use, I would opt for a medium speed because we don't want it to be low that it's not going to puncture the skin enough and therefore implant enough solution. And we don't want it to be too high that we're going to puncture the skin too much and actually cause trauma. So a nice medium speed is perfect, particularly because you're going to be using a pendulum movement. Needle usage. This is where it gets really, really interesting. Personally, I would advise you to use your round liner needles. Reason being, they are tightly grouped together. They're going to implant a lot of product very quickly. They are sharper than round shaded needles as well, so they're going to work that little bit deeper and they're going to therefore extract that pigment quicker um, without causing trauma or having to work over the area more than you need to. So, when you're working on dense areas, areas that are really dark, I would use a 5 RL because of course the more needles that are present, that's going to multiply the amount of product that's going to be implanted. And when you are working on maybe say a very small detailed area like a hair stroke, I would use either a 3 RL or maybe a one liner 0.4 because that is a more um, compact needle and it's going to pay a little bit more attention to detail because it's that little bit smaller. In terms of needle length, I'd be going for about 1.5 millimeters. We don't want it to be short, we don't want it to be long, a little bit in the middle, but we don't want it to be too long specifically because the longer the needle is, the longer it takes for the solution to reach the tip of the needle and therefore enter the skin. So about 1.5 millimeters is, is perfect. So before you treat your client, it is important to prepare their skin to be broken. You want to make sure that it's been cleansed with either an alcohol wipe or something like chlorhexidine, which I like because it's antiseptic, so it's a little bit gentle to the skin as well. But it's important that it's been prepped so that it can be broken. Okay, so here I'm using my 5RL needle and I am using a pendulum movement to cover the overall area breaking that skin really nicely, returning for my 
removal solution very regularly to ensure thorough implantation. You can see that the skin's bleeding, which is great. That's going to release all of that old pigment. Here I'm treating fairly deep previous microblading. It's a little bit ashy, quite stubborn. There we go. Back for solution all the time. So I'm really making sure that I've got thorough coverage of the area. And here I have swapped to my 3RL and I'm really paying attention to detail to the individual strokes using my pendulum movement specifically on each stroke accurately treating each one to really ensure that I can remove that old pigment from each individual hair stroke. Back to my 5RL needle to really make sure that I'm covering every single area of any old pigment. I don't want to miss anything. This amount of bleeding is normal, so don't be put off if you see a similar amount of blood when you are treating your client. I often find that as you get to the front of the eyebrows, the old hair strokes can be so stubborn and so deep where I think that the previous practitioner has been anxious that maybe they're not gonna hold because you know the front of the eyebrows are in the T-zone, the T-zone gets oily and oily skin can fade pigment quicker so then they overcompensate by working deeper into the skin and obviously that's just not the right thing to do. So I really struggle to remove those old hair strokes at the front so make sure that you're using your 3RL needle or your 0.41 liner and really paying attention to each individual stroke to get those out. I really like to rub in the solution into the brows. It can burn a little bit, it can really be quite uncomfortable, but rub it in and almost leave it on like a mask for 10 or so minutes whilst you treat the other eyebrow for long as they can bear it. And that's going to penetrate deep into the skin that you have just worked over. Working on the opposite brow. I'm treating the individual hair strokes here. And once I completed the whole eyebrow again, we apply that really nice thick and thorough mask of the solution, the removal solution, to really get nice and deep into the skin to extract that pigment. 
Okay, so now that we've gone through the procedure itself, I'm gonna take you through the aftercare. Now the brows are going to look sore, they're not going to look pretty, and they're probably going to be oozing fluid, either a little bit of blood or lymph. So what I ask my clients to do is I ask them to clean the area every 15 minutes to half an hour using a damp cotton pad or a wet wipe. And that's going to really, really help to remove any excess fluid so that they don't scab dry, dr very like, dramatically. Um, and then I also ask them to apply hydrogel to the area because that's just gonna really, really soothe the skin and take away any discomfort. For two weeks, I'm asking them to just avoid getting them wet, sweating, anything that's going to aggravate the brows, like picking the scabs, um, going on some beds, obviously not, steamy conditions, products in and around the area. So quite similar to your micropigmentation aftercare. Um, we don't want to risk causing an infection or any scarring. Okay, so I'm going to do an FAQs with you all. In terms of how long the session should be, I would advise 30 to 45 minutes of pre-numbing and then around 30 minutes for the procedure itself. So you could maybe sit them in reception whilst you're finishing off with the client for them to numb. I use a lot of numbing cream, like a really thick, white layer, sometimes I put cling film on top of the area as well, um, but about 30 to 45 minutes is a really good amount of time before they lie down for the appointment. How much should you charge? I would advise you to charge 60 to 80 pounds per session, so it's not cheap and it's not ridiculously expensive, it's kind of accessible to everybody who's wanting to remove any pigment that they're just not happy with. How long should I leave between each appointment? Really, really good question. Six weeks. That's how long it takes for the skin to turn over and heal. So we don't want to do it before because it's going to be too soon. The skin might fray, it might scar. Uh, afterwards, after six weeks, I just don't think they're going to see the results as quickly as they would like to and they're probably not going to be as thorough. So try and get them booked in between every six and eight weeks. How much is this going to cost you to do? So obviously it's going to cost your initial training. I wouldn't be looking to spend like hundreds of thousands of pounds in your training because you have got that basic knowledge from your micropigmentation on how to carry out this procedure. So look for good value training and it should then Following that, probably cost you about £10 a session, including the product that you're using and also your cartridge. What should I set my machine at and why? So I did go over this earlier, but I'm just going to really um, go over this again. I always suggest a medium speed setting for this procedure because if the speed setting is too low, the needle isn't going to be penetrating in and out of the cartridge enough times to actually implant the product and you might have to end up going over it more than you want and therefore causing more trauma and it's going to take longer and too high um, speed setting is going to puncture the skin far too much um, and you could cause more harm than good. So a nice medium speed setting is perfect. What needle should I use and why? Again, I did go over this earlier in the course, but just to really recap on that, I think your brown liner needles are ideal because they're compact, but they are generally, um, if you're using a multiple configured needle, that's going to multiply the amount of product that you're able to implant during that session without having to go over the area again and again and again with a single needle. Um, your round shader needles, they're loosely packed together so they're not going to implant that pigment as densely and as much as we would like and also they're not as sharp so they're potentially not going to work as deep, it might take more sessions so I think your round liner needles are perfect. Can I use secondary numbing? I think basically the principle behind it is that secondary numbing such as tag, blue gel, it can suppress bleeding and we want the area to bleed. If your client is experiencing a lot of discomfort, I would advise applying a very small amount of secondary numbing, but not for long at all, just to take the edge off, but not suppress any bleeding. That would be my answer. That's what I would do in my clinic, but it's totally up to you. Should I patch test? Again, like it's completely down to your discretion. You do not have to patch test with your salt and saline tattoo solutions, especially not fixed anyway, because it's natural. It's a natural product. 
but if you want to patch test, I would personally be decanting a very small amount of the solution onto the fabricated part plaster and applying it to the client's wrist or just behind the ear for 24 hours to see if they get a reaction or not. And finally, is it painful? It's not pain free and it's not unbearable by any means. It's uncomfortable and that's what they should expect. You know, you're needling the skin, you're then also implanting a salt based solution which is going to hurt when it, that's applied to an open wound. So I think it's just about being honest and really transparent with your clients. Maybe do it on yourself and see what it feels like so that you've got a little bit of experience. But no, it's not unbearable. Um, but it's definitely not pain free by any means either. Thank you guys for watching this video today. I really hope that it gives you an insight into the salt and saline tattoo removal process. Any comments, feedback, questions, literally just leave them below or Instagram me at ggbrowseuk or you can also email me georgie at ggbrowse.co.uk. Take care guys and I'll see you all soon.